Hi class, we are still on muscle physiology. And in this next section, let's take a look at muscles and tendons and let's look at their orientation of how this is set up and how, where does it eventually attach to? Now, we talked about origins and insertions, didn't we? Origin is more proximal insertions are more distal, but these really are tendons. And tendons, as we see, tendons attach to bones. The specific part of the bone that tendons attach to is the outside of bone referred to as the periosteum. The outer part of the bone is the periosteum. The inside of the bone is the endosteum. So muscles attach to bones by way of tendons, but we know that bone attaches to bone by way of ligaments. There's the difference. Now, let's look at some of the microscopic part, and you're gonna be hearing terms called muscle fibers. You're gonna hear endosteum. You're gonna hear uh, perimysium. So we have an endomysium, a perimysium, and all the way on the outside, an epimysium. So endomysium is most inner. Perimysium is in the middle. Epimysium is on the outside. And these are layers of tissue that protect the deepest part of the muscle. So if I were to draw this out for you, let's say we have these muscle fibers here, and these are muscle fibers here, and these are muscle fibers here. Okay, let me change the color real quick. We're going to have an endosteum surrounding these, right? So it's an innermost protective covering here. That's the endosteum. Now let's change the color. So let's say endosteum, I'm just gonna put that blue color there, okay? Now let me change the color to, let's do black here. Now I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to do this, okay? So that, I'm going to call that also 2, but I'm going to call that 2B and 2A. So perimysium and fascicle, I'm going to put the black next to both of them. They're really the same thing, okay? So when we surround all of these endomysiums in a group, this is a fascicle, this is a fascicle, and this is a fascicle. And what makes up the fascicle is the perimysium surrounding that, okay? And the last, let's make this, how about we make this one green? Now I can surround all of these in one layer like that. And that would be the epimysium. Okay, that's how it's kind of layered like this. Okay, all of them combined help make up the skeletal muscle. And it's not the muscle that is attaching to the skeleton, it is the tendon. So the extension of muscle blends in with this tendon over here and then the tendon attaches this is contracting this has the ability to shorten and lengthen all it does is it transmits the contractile tension to this tendon and then the tendon is going to tug on the bone okay so hopefully you 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 can follow that so the same concept that we just spoke about we can see it's just on a different cross section here so we have the endomysium, innermost, perimysium, 
in the middle. And remember, we said this we'll call that number one. We'll call the perimysium number two, but so are muscle fascicles because the perimysium makes up a fascicle. You can see that layer right there. And then the epimysium goes all the way around. Okay. Same thing from this view endomysium, perimysium, epimysium. A tendon attaches to bone. Okay, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, the skeletal muscle is made up of these individual cells. They're called muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber is surrounded by connective tissue called an endomysium. You can have a group of 10 to 100 muscle fibers surrounded by a perimysium, and that's called a fascicle. These two go together. And then a group of fascicles surrounded by its layer called an epimysium. So you have your endomysium, your perimysium, and your epimysium. Now the endo, peri, and epi, they're gonna extend through the muscle. They're gonna join at the end to form tendons. And remember, one of them is gonna be an origin and the other is gonna be an insertion. The origin attaches to bone more proximally. The insertion attaches to the bone more distally. Origin stays still, insertion moves. Tendons are inelastic connective tissue that's going to attach to the periosteum, right? There's not a lot of give to tendons. When you have a broad, flat tendon, we call it an aponeurosis, okay? What is an aponeurosis? It is a broad, flat tendon. Some examples that you can look up as to where we have an aponeurosis, when you look at the origin of the latissimus dorsi of the lats, or if you look at the insertion site of the biceps brachii, when you look at the insertion of the biceps brachii, it's called the bicipital aponeurosis. When you look at the origin of the lats, it's called the thoracolumbar aponeurosis. Thoracolumbar aponeurosis. Okay. Now fascia, fascia is a term that describes the sheet of fibrous connective tissue that exists beneath the skin and it surrounds everything. It's gonna surround muscle, it's gonna surround your organs, it's gonna surround your blood vessels, gonna surround nerve, it actually surrounds everything. If you're a carnivore, if you've ever eaten, let's say a piece of chicken before, let's say a drumstick, you can peel the skin off, right? You peel the skin and now you can see the meat. The meat is the muscle. But superficial to the muscle, sometimes, is a, not sometimes, but you can often see an, uh, a clear, translucent sheath that you can peel off. Well, that's called fascia, okay? And one of the problematic features of fascia, if a person has ever broken their clavicle or broken their arm, and the arm is in a cast where it's bent at 90 degrees or it's in a sling where your elbow is bent at 90 degrees and you have to keep your arm tucked up against your belly for weeks and weeks and weeks. If it's in a cast for a month and you cut the cast off in four weeks, the elbow is still in a flex position when the cast is removed. It doesn't open up and extend very easily. And the reason being is fascia. Fascia is adaptable to the position that the limb is held in. So when the limb is held in a flexed, shortened position, not only is the muscle in a shortened position, but the superficial fascia adapts to that shortened position and it takes lots of therapy to, any, to elongate that, to open up the extremity again. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk about the neuromuscular junction.